that came over uh, the internet. This is a reputable thing, uh, Explore Zone. And it talks about Etta Carina. And it says, Southern sky watchers this time of year can look the most interesting enigmatic star in the sky. It's remarkable that only a few dozen examples are known, and it's called Eta Carina. And it may also be the most dangerous thing in the sky. The reason for the danger is that Eta Carina is like a nearby volcano waiting to explode. But we don't know when. In the last few months, however, it has shown signs of new activity and has astronomers riveted on its every move. And I'm not uh, sure what that's all about. Oh, those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, to, and it, said, it goes on to say that to astronomers, there are two things immediately without a Carina. It's, it's a, it is amazingly, almost impossibly bright. Now, what I'm driving at here is, first of all, it's the seventh. We know it's Eta. It's the seventh. And it is the one star in the sky that no one can explain. It is about to do something. It can have a tremendous impact on the Earth. And it is pumping out what the scientists call highly structured clouds of molecular gas, which is DNA. Something is coming from this Eta Carina. Notice that also it is almost impossibly bright, millions of times brighter than our sun. So all of these things in the sky have a symbolic connection to something. Does the sun in the sky have a connection to Jesus mythologically? Does the supernova have a connection to the pineal gland of the brain? Does the fornax in the sky have a connection to the fornix in the brain? What does Eta Carina have a connection to? It is about to give out its light, and no one knows what the result is going to be. And it is almost impossibly bright, a million times brighter than the sun. So the sun, which is a star, would be the sun of the light, because it's obviously a lot less bright than Eta. So it is impossibly bright, millions of times brighter than our sun. It is also wildly prone to huge flares, outbursts, and dizzying brightness that gives the impression of something pointing towards self-destruction, which it may well be, that's what it says. What causes all this strange behavior, the article says, in Eta Carina, it's enormous. More than 100 times the size of the Earth. We, we, we tend to think of large things as being stable. But in stars of this size, the opposite is true. Now, it goes on to talk about, you know, how it was first spotted and how it brightened and how it dimmed and then how it brightened again. And it talks about how even today it's, it's blasting out this glowing gas at one and a half million miles per hour. I mean, you know, that's, you can't even conceive of that. The amount of material blasted out from Eta Carina is enough to make several of our suns. But for Eta Carina, it's just the latest outburst. What is this thing? 
And remember, keeping in mind again, that what has been told to us about Eta Karina has come from the son of David, Chris, David's son, at Goddard Space Laboratories in Greenbelt. You know, and all of these things are not really, they're, when I say not really what, they're, they're, they're like symbols, they're just attention getters. Well, anyhow, it says that with supernova explosion, a mass that blows a star apart and scatters it remains. That's how most supernovas stars end. But Eta Carina's extreme case that another possibility and the possibility is that Eta Carina could be super supernova. And that at its peak, now get this one, it will consume the entire galaxy. That's what we're talking about the Milky Way. It's the galaxy where you live. That doesn't mean consume, destroy, but it means consume like a light. Just turn that. Let me just say something. Here's the whole wall. We're not going to consume the whole wall, but say we want to consume this part. Now turn that light on. Well, there, it, that light consumed this whole part of the wall. Do you see what I'm saying, Tim? Okay, you can turn that on. So then what, what, this, what this astronomer is saying is that there is something very strange about Eta Carina, and there is something very dangerous about Eta Carina. Eta Carina is strange and dangerous. And in the last short period of time, it has done something. It has started to brighten to the point where it's described as almost impossibly bright, millions of times brighter than the sun. And so now we're finding out that this strange star that was spoken to us by Chris David's son may, in its change to a super supernova, to a hypernova, consume an entire, the entire galaxy. It says here in this article that the blazing violence of the arena is difficult to describe. Now, everybody's going to church, and everybody is reading and telling each other about the end times and about the rapture and all this stuff that nobody really knows, but nobody is talking about the real thing that's going on. Absolutely nobody. And the real thing that's being talked about here, impossibly bright, dangerous, massive, ready to become a hypernova that consume the entire galaxy, and it's the seventh angel. It says, were it much closer, it all life on Earth, eradicating our thin biosphere like an ultraviolet lamp kills microbes. Fortunately, it's not that close. Listen, at 7,500 light years, it's still close enough to do some damage. What is the damage? How, you know, will the damage be felt? Well, they're saying likely damage isn't to humans directly because of our uh, belt that protects us from gamma rays. 
but electronics and space stuff and all of this stuff and so forth and so on is, but they don't really know. I mean, the, the bottom line is they don't really know. What now has astronomers thinking again about Eta? It has started brightening again, more than doubling in brightness in the last 18 months. And this sudden change, according to this article, was completely unsuspected. Theories about Eta Carina held that it had entered a, a new phase which it would slowly brighten and then start to but instead of slowly brightening, it shot up and it continues to brighten, and it has theorists totally puzzled. Now, this is the interesting part. Here is the seventh angel. Is this the seventh angel of Revelation? It certainly appears to be. We know that it is pouring out highly structured clouds of molecular gas, which is DNA, okay? And, and, and this is the interesting part. Albert, this is the interesting part. It is pouring this gas out at one and a half million miles per hour. Can't conceive of such a... I mean, you know. So here we have a light in the sky that is impossibly bright and is getting brighter and brighter and brighter, even though it's beyond being possible to be as bright as it is now. It is now being considered that it will not become a supernova, that it will become a super supernova or a hypernova. It is, as far away as it is, still possible that Eta Karina may be close enough to do some damage. And if it doesn't do damage, it's still close enough to do something. I mean, if it's this close, it may bang. If it's this close, it may... Mm. If it's this close, it might just change things. But who is it? Who is this one? Now, remember, if Jesus is a symbol of the sun, the light of the world, you know, coming down and being crucified and resurrecting as the sun does. And if supernova 1987a is a symbol of the pineal, and fornax is a symbol of the fornix, and pegasus is a symbol of the hippocampus, who's this a symbol of? Now the interesting part here about Eta Carina is here is this thing which the astronomers say could do this damage. Here is this thing that no one can explain. Here is this thing pumping out DNA at one and a half million miles an hour. Here is this thing about to become a hypernova to consume this entire galaxy. And then we turn the slide on. I want to show you a picture of it. And maybe Charles can, uh, oh, I forgot about that. Well, you know what we can do? We probably put it here. Yeah, that's good. And maybe if we could, if we could focus in down in the, yeah, right here, this is it. This is the one that has the angelic appearance, the seventh angel, right here. Can you see the wing there? And then you see another wing here, it's like an angel. This is the one that the Russian cosmonauts said they saw seven faces look like seven angels in there. You know? But now here's the point about Eta Carina. This is the Keyhole Nebula, and I want you to really consider this. The most brilliant light in the universe pouring out these life structures, about to do something to the Earth with light, and here's the amazing thing about it. Nobody has ever seen it. No one has ever seen the face of Eta Carina. Who is it really? 
And that's what the, the scientist here says. What makes the puzzle particularly difficult is that no one has actually seen Eta Carina. When we look towards Eta Carina and photograph it, we find that Eta is actually covered in a great shroud. You thought about the Shroud of Turin? Forget it. And there is speculation now among the scientists what in the world is behind that shroud? And even when they try, according to this article, to explain it, what could be causing something to be so bright, it doesn't explain the burning question of the moment. What happened to Eta Carina in the last few months, and what in the world, or out of the world, is going to happen next? No one really knows. And Albert, they say here, we are all like geologists watching a volcano. All we can do is watch and wait. Eta Carina could blow any time. And it will continue spewing this molecular gas until that day, perhaps tomorrow, when it will suddenly be the most phenomenal display of violence ever witnessed by humans. It is now being watched around the world almost for the fascination as much for the science. That's quite a line. That is quite a line. It will suddenly be the most phenomenal display of violence ever witnessed by humans. But perhaps, it says at the end of this article, the ultimate knowledge we can gain from Eta Carina is not about stars but about ourselves, the scale of creation. We are puny creatures indeed, and luckily have such a protective abode. And so, <coughs> think of some of the scriptures that you've read about and thought about as you've uh, had your Bible about this thing called God that is so bright that no one can look on its face and no one has ever seen its face. And then think about a Karina. Something about to happen. You know, and it's so interesting because now we can put together at a Karina with the Bible and with the scriptures because we have evolved to the point where we can see at a Karina. We had to be able to reach that point of evolution to see it before we could then compare and say, wait a minute, is this what's being referred to? Is this what's being talked about in these scriptures? You know, you, 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 can, you get people and they start writing in grand mythological terms and what they call God. And what they may mean is God could certainly be something that has the capacity to create, to heal, or to destroy. Doesn't mean a man, because that very Bible tells you God is not a man. God is light. Light? Well, this article says that Eta Carina is impossibly bright. It's not possible to be as bright as it is, but it is. So what is it? And, and yet, everybody's walking around going to church, paying no attention to this thing. And you have, obviously, scientists sitting on the edge of their seat saying, what in the world is this thing going to do? How could anything be this bright? And, and you know, it, it's, it's really amazing that 
were not able to put together the descriptions that were written many thousands of years ago. Descriptions written many thousands of years ago about a light. A light that creates, a light that can destroy, a light that changes, a light that has a direct impact on life. That's it. Then you get into the scriptures about the seventh angel, and you get into the stories about the keel of the ship, and all this kind of business. And now, to this point here, where the scientists are concerned or con predicting that Eta will not become a supernova, but a super supernova. Not a superstar, but a super superstar, a hypernova that will consume with its light the entire galaxy. So what can you do about it? Nothing. Nothing anybody can do about it. But indeed, if this is what I'm telling you that it is, then you have the capacity to begin to harmonize with it, to begin to flow in a harmony with it. This awesome power. Well, you've always considered God to be an awesome power. You've also always considered God to be this bright light. Look at it again, Charles. Let the folks at home look at this again. Amazingly, it takes the form of an angel. And amazingly, it's called the seventh, Edda. And amazingly, in the book of Revelation, it says that when all of the things start to unwind and unravel and unlock and the mystery is solved, it will come from the seventh angel. You see the wing there? And then over here is another wing. And there is the center of the head. And it's in the homunculus nebula, which is called the little man. This particular nebula that it's created is called the hourglass. Isn't that interesting when you talk about the hour, the time, the day? the hour. If you look right next to Eta Carina, you'll see over here Supernova 1987A. And this is the one whose center is on fire and about to light up the Earth as well. So we have two of them. You've got Eta Carina about to consume the entire galaxy in its light, and you've got Supernova 1987A which initially they thought was going to affect the Earth in 2002, but is now on fire, and all bets are off on that. So you've got two massive things, both focusing around um, biblical scriptures. Now, in addition to that, you've got the open eye looking at this whole show from the Hourglass Nebula, which is right here. That's the eye of the Hourglass Nebula. What do I say this was? This isn't the Hourglass Nebula, that's the keyhole. This is the Hourglass Nebula, and that's the eye. So I was saying to the folks in New York last night when we say here that people would think this is a cult, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But I said, all I can say is what Humphrey Bogart said in Casablanca. Here's looking at you, kid. Look who's looking at you. Then, of course, we have the Helix Nebula over here pouring out tadpole-like sperms flying across the universe. And each head of each of these little tadpole-like sperms is larger than the size of our solar system. I mean, yeah, it's just beyond belief. All of these things are happening now, and everybody's in church saying, Amazing Grace, I'm a wretch. What a, you know, please. What a wretch am I. My God, what a wretch is that wretch that wrote that <laughs> stupid song. But what I am proposing, and I have proposed to you, and after listening this morning, let's, let, let's come over here for a minute. Eta Carina, which is the seventh, it is the ship, the keel of the ship, which equates it to protein, which is the prow of the ship. Carina means keel of the ship, the root of protein is prow, which means hull of the ship. Coming out of it is DNA. It is the brightest 
light in the sky, in the universe, and is the only thing up there that no one understands. Okay? No one understands it. It is covered by a shroud. No one has ever seen it. And it is now poised to do something that is going to consume the entire galaxy in its light. And we're seeing all the changes from DNA. And it is named after the Argo which is the ship that gave instructions. And we have a day today where all of the scientists are receiving instructions about DNA. So all of this is happening. Is this the light in the sky that the ancients wrote and referred to as God? Not a man, but a light. Is this it? Because this thing is impossibly bright and getting brighter and brighter and brighter and about to do something. To do something that is going to impact the earth and the people on it, one way or the other. How much, how, we don't know. But it says in the scriptures, when the voice of the seventh angel is heard, then the mystery will be revealed. This is the seventh. The angles of light are pouring out as lasers out of Eta Carina, pumping out DNA. <clears throat> and about ready now in a light that is brighter than anything ever seen and never... Isn't this amazing, Howard? It's the brightest light in the universe and nobody has seen it. What is it? The brightest light in the universe and nobody has seen it. Brighter than ours million times brighter than the sun, but nobody has ever seen it. Now that's what you're talking So if you're going to write about God in the Old Testament, that would really be a good candidate, wouldn't it? Now, there's an interesting thing here, because if you have our sun in the sky, and if our sun in the sky is Jesus, would Eta Carina, because it's a million times brighter than our sun, be the father? And Jesus be the son, the son of the father? If you remember, we look at overhead 59 in the story of the Argo, which is the keel of the ship. This is from the ancient Greek myth, down here. The Argo was the most seaworthy ship ever seen. They put a piece of sacred oak in its prow. You see that word prow is the root of the word protein. It had the power to speak in the time of danger. So whenever there was a dangerous time, Jason would go to the keel of the ship. Its eyes were closed and Jason would say, wake up and the keel of the ship would open its eyes, it would form a face of a person, and it would speak and give instructions as to what to do. Well now, if Jesus is the Son, and Edda is the Father, the instructions would then come from the Son. And there's an interesting thing, that is similar in Mark 4.37, which we'll see in B17. There arose a great storm in the ship, and he, meaning Jesus, was in the hind part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Well, that, you know, a great storm, and the ship's being rocked, and all this guy's sleeping. Well, please. They woke him up and said, hey, we're going to die, and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said, be, peace be still in the weeks, and it was a great cop. What I'm trying to get here is that this story is very similar to the Jason story. You awake the one who is capable of calming the storm and getting you safely to the other side. And we compare those two stories. So, 
Can we consider that the voice of the seventh angel, Eta Carina, <coughs> has begun to speak? And what is the result? The mystery of God, which is the genetic code, is being unraveled. Healing is coming to the earth. Understanding, restoration of memory, the supreme cosmic gift is coming down from the seventh angel whose voice has begun to sound. What does it mean? And I want you to keep in mind a whole, whole new thing that we've thought of today. Is this, were, were the ancient writers writing about a light in the sky that is the source of creation and destruction and change? And were they writing about this that is a million times brighter than the sun being the father and the Jesus being the son of the father? And if all of this then is coming from this light, I mean, just consider something which is mind-boggling. This is the brightest light that has ever existed in the universe and no one can see it. Remember when Moses was up on the mountain in that myth and he said to God, let me see your face? He said, no one has ever, no one can look upon my face. How could you look upon that light? How could you look upon a light? You can't look at the sun. How could you look upon a light that's a million times brighter than the sun? Could you conceive of such a thing like that? You know, you get the sun in your eyes, especially on September. Sun's going, you're driving your car and you can't say, can you imagine something that's a million times brighter than that? Could that be what they're referring to as God? Not being a man, but being a light. And is that the light that's coming upon the earth? According to the scientists, it is. And what is it going to do? Scientists aren't sure. Could blow the whole thing up. We're probably going to just change some stuff. But anyhow, what is does all of this mean? Since highly structured clouds of molecular gas are coming out of Eta Carina, being forced out on invisible lasers, which Chris Davidson, the son of David, told us has never been seen anything like it before. They've never seen invisible lasers before. It's coming out of Eta Carina. And what is it doing? What is the change? Let me show you. Overhead 251, there's an article here from Newsweek, which is... Um, Reputable, I would think. Science and technology. The Genome Project. Soon science will know the blueprint of human life, the code of codes, the holy grail. The source code of Homo sapien, that's people. That knowledge promises to revolutionize medicine and vault the biotech industry into the Wall Street stratosphere. Beyond that, there is no crystal ball clear enough to reveal how knowing the entire genome will change the way we live and even the way we think about who we are. And then there's a, a discussion about it. But look at what, how they're referring to this. We've got overheads, remember that says the book of life is being opened, the book of life is being revealed and all of this business. Here's a Newsweek article saying that now they're opening knowing the holy grail. See, these guys are, whoever's writing this stuff is really understanding the significance. The only one don't understand the significance of this are religious people. And the reason is because this entire thing overwhelms their need to interpret the scriptures literally. If they get to a point where they can obey the Bible and say, be not a minister of the letter, don't take it literally. I speak in dark sayings mythology, if they can start obeying the Bible and read it as it's supposed to be and understand it as it's supposed to be, there's no problem here. There's no problem here. Are we talking about God as light? And the brightest light in the sky right now that no one can see is at a Karina, the seventh. And it is spewing out DNA, molecular gas, at a one and a half million miles an hour and about ready to consume the entire galaxy in a hyper-explosion, and nobody knows what the heck's going to happen. So could that be 
what they meant when they talked about God, the light of the world. And could that be the, what they were talking about when they talked about Jesus being the Son of God, the light of the world? Now, if you've been following the news, you'll, you'll re it's been all over the television this week that the Solera Company, I believe, out in California, has actually mapped, has completed mapping. Now, they, that, you know, they've mapped it. They haven't broken down all of the complex. Could, God, I mean, if, it, if they have to do it themselves, it could take a thousand years. But, I mean, they've mapped it. And it's an amazing event. It is the keel of the ship leading us to the Golden Fleece. It is Jesus in the boat calming the savage storm of incurable disease. What is happening now is what everyone who has ever gone to church praying and hoping would happen. It is happening. And nobody is paying any attention. I remember the Bhagwan once and he was talking about Jesus. He says he can't believe such a story. He says the Jewish people waited thousands of years for a Messiah, and when he showed up, they killed him and gave the business to the Italians. <laughs> he said, how are you going to make sense of this stuff? Because <laughs> he, he had a way all of his own. He's a great guy in his head anyhow. So the great mystery is being revealed. The great healer is coming to the earth in the form of a... I know that some of you, you know, you have husbands or wives or family members, and, and some of you are interested in this, and others, they say, I, I can't give up. Please. I mean, go and look at this stuff. Because it's... it's where's your security? You're worried about the stock market. Here's something that's about ready to blow the galaxy, and, and you're worried about the stock market. <laughs> so people then that are going to church are oblivious that this is happening or that it has any connection to their faith. In other words, the appearance of the power of God upon the earth with signs and wonders is being ignored by those going to church. I used to go to, when I used to go to church, they'd say there will be an appearance of God with signs and wonders. Don't you think curing cancer is a wonder? Don't you think DNA coming out of a strange light in the sky is a sign? Don't you, <laughs> when Jesus says, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light, don't you see that looking at something like this here is a, a sign? Wouldn't you say that's a sign? Doesn't that look like an eye to you? Sure. So signs and wonders are happening on the earth now, and everybody's in church singing that song. Signs and wonders. You just looked at the eye, the open eye of God in the Keyhole Nebula. You're looking at the eye on fire in Supernova. You're looking at the great ship Argo. And you were experiencing something that only can be dreamed before. Do you know what they said last week on CNN that the scientists have found with DNA? Aging is nothing more than genes following wrong instructions. That aging is like cancer. That the genes have been mutated to such an extent that they're reading their instructions improperly and that people shouldn't age that way. The opening of the genetic book of life and the soon coming healing of diseases previously thought to be incurable. Everything that I have shown you in the supernovas, the helix, the hourglass nebula, all of these lights in the sky are being brought to you by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Thank God, whatever that is, there is no ministers or religious people involved in it. NASA is bringing them to Christians and non-Christians. Do you realize... Let's do it again, Charles. Do you realize that that eye in the sky 
can't be taken over by Christians or Muslims or Hindus or Bo it's it's for everything. It's for dogs and cats. It's for everything that's alive. It's looking down on everything. It has no denomination. It has no denomination. So here these pictures are coming to you and they have connected with the scriptures. Now if you'll just, Charles over here, you don't have to zoom in on them, but if you just look at the four of them, there's the eye in the sky that's open. There's supernova with the eye that is on fire. There's Eta Carina that we think is actually the seventh angel or God. And there's the great orgasm in the sky. The hill spewing forth sperm, heading for the great womb of the great mother. There's all of them together. All the lights in the skies. Look at them. The eye, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. If your eye be single, your body will fill with light. When the voice of the seventh angel speaks, the mystery of God will be revealed. And then, of course, the great conception of the womb of the great mother. All of these things. In the, and what does it say in the scripture? Let's look at B32, Genesis 1, 14. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, and let them be for signs. My God, you got eyes and sperm and pineal glands and angels up there. Let them be for signs. And of course, for seasons and to divide the day. But what we're looking at here is from the standpoint of the spirit and metaphysics, let them be for signs. The eye is on fire, isn't it? We saw it. Well, then it's a sign. The eye is open, it's staring at you. The helix is pumping out this cosmic sperm swimming all over the universe. What are they signs of? Charles, when you have to, when you have to take off, uh, Ethel can run over there. The signs that we are seeing have direct relevance to Scripture. And I want the folks sitting in here, because you know where I'm coming from, what I'm talking about here. The astronomers and the scientists are all dumbfounded. Here, here's a guy saying, we're scientists, we're astronomers, but right now, we're like geologists watching a volcano. All we can do is watch and wait. It could blow any time. But one thing that they have showed us, the eye of supernova is on fire, and the fire is coming to the earth. Not fire, fire, light, magnetism. Eta Carina is spewing forth DNA and is about to explode and bathe the entire galaxy in its celestial light and change things. And what does it say? Look at B32 again. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth night. You know that word? Most people don't even know what the, you know people go and they sing that song, they don't even know what the heck that means. I want you to see how, if you're a religious person, how you can find out what redemption means. You go to Atlantic City, any place, you want to go to Harris or the Trump Castle or wherever you want to go, and you go play the slots. And you, if you win anything in the slots, you take those coins, which are basically worthless, and you take them to the redemption booth. And at the redemption booth, they give you real money. In other words, you're, 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 you're turning in something that has no value for something that has great value. So basically, what happens here is what the scripture said, when you start to see single eyes in the sky, when you start to see the advancement of, uh, of the cosmic sperm to the, to the great mother earth, when you start to see the seventh angel, when you start to see the eye on fire, then look up, because it's now time to swap in that which you have which is of no value for that which has great value. So you're going to the great Trump Taj Mahal in the sky. And the great, what's his name? 
<laughs> Donald. <laughs> yeah. To give you the real stuff. Only thing is, it's serious. Look up because something wondrous is happening up there. And that fire in the center of supernova. Let's look at overhead 154. Down here, Chris, uh, George Sonnenborn, which means the birth of the sun. Down, bring up here. George Sonnenborn of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, says that it should start, and then a final burst of light visible on Earth in 2005. Well, that gives you time to make your plans. You can move to Montana. <laughs> Won't work. <laughs> But anyhow, that's all off uh, now because we can't depend on that. Things have changed, as we'll see in overhead 235. Talking about the center, Hubble scientist Robert Kirshner says, now it's lit and the opening jab has been made. The dancing around is over. The slugfest will begin. Now, I know you have ministers and priests and rabbis and pastors and all of these people and evangelists. I use my uh, people of that type as a guy like this who's an astronomer with the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. That's really God stuff. That's real God stuff. That's real Bible stuff. You're not that faith with a guy named, like, Kirchner. I mean, he takes you right to the thing and said, this is it. I've seen it. He's a witness. This other astronomer says, we'll, we'll just have to see what lights up next. The fact new ones have lit up suggests that much of the surface is ready to light up. Much of what surface is ready to light up? Charles, sorry, but here it is again. This is what they're talking about right here in that corner. That's supernova, 1987A, and that center eye is lighting up. And that is going to come down to the Earth. That equates to the pineal gland of the brain, which causes what the Hindus refer to as kundalini. We're going to wrap this up. I just want to show you one thing. So what is coming according to NASA? A great light is coming. A great light is coming from supernova. A greater light is coming from Eta Carina, the impossibly brightest light that has ever been in the universe, and has, nobody has ever seen it. It is encased in a shroud. It hides its face. But it brings forth the elements of life. And we are about to take part in the exodus and move out of this lower and, and, and mutated existence to a higher form of existence because the great light has come to the earth. The sun of the great light has paved the way, and now the great light is coming to the earth, the supreme light being that the Bible calls God. Let me just show you one thing in, in B32. The statement in Exodus, which is so interesting. Is that there, B32? It's not? B-32 is not there? No. Okay, well, we'll show you B-32 next week, then. We'll wrap this up. I don't know. Well, we were in New York last night. I must have... Uh... Well, what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> Did you tell yes. us that? Yes. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You already did that. Wait a minute. Yeah, we do have oh, okay. All right, let's look at here. <laughs> Exodus 10:23. They saw not one another neither rose any from his place for three days. Do you know anybody else that rose after three days? Do you know the sun and the solstice that rises after three days? But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. See, it's mythology. Why did the Son of God rise in Three days. The same reason that these rose in three days. They had light. There is a statement which we are going through now. We are moving to the promised land of healing. We are in the Exodus. 
Not rising for three days is the three days of solstice when the sun is entombed and rises to new life. When Jesus is entombed three days and rises in new life, it is all part of the mythology that points to the fact that is ra el spirit mind god together has light in their dwelling which is mind and which the mind via the single eye or the pineal gland of the brain for with you is the fountain of life in your light shall we see light in Eta Carina shall we see the book of life and shall we understand the code and heal the disease and bring eternal life. The people that walked in darkness, us, have seen a great light, Eta. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, cancer, upon them have the light shined, healing. He reveals the deep and dark and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. That was the true light, which lights every man, woman that comes into the world. The angle of light that comes, enters the mother's womb, enters the fetus, and gives light to every living thing that comes into the world. While you have light, believe in the light that you may be the children of the light. And the great light, the impossible light, is about to consume the entire galaxy and to cast off the shroud of its angelic wings. It is the seventh angel of Revelation. With that, we will uh, look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye.